There are not many interviews that Donald Trump could do right now where I'd be like, you know, I've got to watch that. I might get something different. Donald Trump's been interviewed hundreds of times the last eight years, nine years. He's been the most talked about man on the planet. But a sit down interview with Dave Ramsey that he recorded last week at Trump Tower that's interviewing this week is one that I actually sit there and say to myself, I am not missing that because it's going to be different. And I saw the Dave Ramsey team drop this first interaction between Donald Trump and Dave Ramsey from last week. And it's actually hysterical. Here's what it sounded like. And I've watched him from my whole life. This should be oh, the easiest yeah. interview that I've learned from him. <laughs> I've watched him my whole life. This should be the easiest interview ever. Trump says as he meets Dave Ramsey. Ken Coleman, of course, is a Ramsey personality. His show, The Ken Coleman Show, find it wherever you get your podcasts. Ken, take me behind the scenes on how this thing came together and what it's been like for the entire Ramsey team getting set for this interview coming up this week. Yeah, you know, I think Dave decided that, uh, you know, uh, with the influence of the Ramsey show, certainly Dave's decades of influence of, of helping people spend their money wisely, get out of debt, uh, that, you know, uh, the size of our show uh, warranted an ask of both candidates. So we reached out to uh, both candidates, uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, and uh, got responses from both uh, the Harris campaign said uh, it's consideration and uh, Trump's team uh, took it quick and we're like, hey, we, we can do it, you know, pretty quick as in next week. It came up really fast. And so that's how it came about. You know, Dave just wanted to, to talk about the issues, to talk about money, the uh, issues that are facing Americans. So uh, you'll get to see the, the whole deal coming up this week. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, speaking of the issues, you and I have talked a lot about, obviously, some of the job market issues that are impacting uh, Americans right now. And one is something that you've noted, and that is that people on LinkedIn are struggling to get noticed. So what are they doing? They are labeling themselves desperate on their profile photos. You know, Ken, I have not been on LinkedIn a lot. I have never online dated, thank goodness. But something tells me screaming about your own desperation is probably not a good play here. What are you noticing and what's your analysis of this trend? Well, I agree with you. It's it's not a good look, right? I mean, who among us uh, ever really wants to look desperate? We certainly don't want to act desperate, uh, although we all have. Uh, so, yeah, not a good brand idea to label your, your, uh, your uh, profile with desperate. But what's going on is um, we have more people applying for jobs than ever before because of the ease of it. Mm -hmm. It's just so much easier to apply online for jobs. And that's been going on for quite some time. So what happens is when there's an open position, you're literally just, if you're going about it the same old way of I'm applying online, I've got my fancy cover letter, I got my really polished resume, the bottom line is you're not standing out if there's no connection to uh, the to the actual hiring manager. We know from all kinds of data that people hire people they know or hire somebody that uh, their team knows. And so the inside edge is always going to be a relationship. So what's happening is, is when someone applies and they just keep applying and they get no response or they just get the standard we've moved on, uh, that begins to chip away at your soul. So uh, the, the impact of that is, is you do desperate things because you feel desperate. So what is that one thing then, if, if people are out there right now in Kansas City and they are looking for that next job, maybe they're out of work, maybe they're looking for something different, what is the best way, Ken Coleman, to stand out in this economy? Yeah, I, I, you know, if I want to go to company XYZ for a job, I am doing uh, detective work. You know, I, I'm contacting everybody I know to see if uh, they know anybody that works in that building. Would you make a personal connection for me and then make that personal connection and say, hey, listen, I know we know each other through so and so. Uh, and I know you don't you may not be making the hiring decision, probably not. But, would, you know, I, I'm here. I just want to uh, see if I can stand out to you enough to where you'd make a personal recommendation and say, hey, this person uh, who I know through X. Uh, I think is a solid candidate. You have to do that over and over again. Um, you're going to have to do some things that make you stand out. You know, besides a resume submission, if you can find out who the hiring manager is, get creative. How do you stand out? 
You know, mm-hmm. what could you do to make an impression uh, on that hiring manager? Because that's what you're up against. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality. Find him the Ken Coleman Show uh, wherever you get your podcasts. You also hear him, of course, on the Ramsey Show as well here on 95.7 FM KCMO. Now, you have noticed as well, Ken, despite the fact that everyone's raving about, you know, uh, stock markets continuing to hit record highs, you are noticing on Main Street an uptick in layoffs. Are there specific industries you see getting, getting hit? And if so, why is this happening? Yeah, I don't think you're seeing a big pattern right now to where one industry is leading the way. But you are seeing, you know, major public companies over the last six to 12 months uh, they will trim back their payroll uh, based on stock price. So they're playing stock price. They're they're playing that balance sheet game, and that's pretty standard when you have somewhat of a uh, unsure economy. And, and if we've had anything, it's been an unsure economy. Bright spots, uh, low spots, and even as we head into a presidential election, so you got a whole lot of unknowns there, and a lot of people are hedging their bets. And let's not forget that, again, uh, while inflation has cooled a bit and the Fed has now decided to obviously make a cut uh, on the rate, um, it's still it's still expensive to do business. And we've seen a cooling in the employment market. I've been on this show many times in the last few months talking about an ongoing cooling where people are just sitting tight. They're not hiring as much as they used to. So I'm not seeing big, huge layoff patterns, but you're going to see the occasional you know, pop up where you'll see Amazon again laying off. That's a big story because they're Amazon. But again, that's a part of an overall trimming as we see consumer behaviors change. And Amazon's a big example of that. As consumers uh, stop purchasing, uh, then obviously Amazon starts cutting. So how do you see then, you know, 36 days to go until the election? You mentioned the rate cut from 10 days ago as well. How do those two things jive together as we look at this fall in particular into the holidays, what consumer confidence is going to be and how we should look at the economy at large based on some theoretical good news, a cut rate, but then also seeing an uptick in layoffs as well at some major corporations? Yeah, I think stagflation is still kind of hanging out. You know, let's just see what happens over the next quarter. Uh, Does inflation continue to hold steady? Does it cool a little bit? But then if we see the unemployment rate continuing to rise, we've got to keep our eye on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if that happens, that begins to weigh on consumers. When they see the unemployment numbers jump up, they start to worry about themselves, and then they start to hold back. So uh, I think uh, we're pretty much in a wait and see over the next uh, 36, 35 days of this election. I think a lot of people are in a wait and see pattern. And so I don't think you're going to see any dominant um, economic uh, revelations. I think the hope for most economists is is that this inflation situation will be handled now as the as the Fed starts to commit to several cuts, small but several. Uh, will we have a soft landing and not go into a recession? I think that's what most economists are watching. So we'll see what happens. I think we got this full quarter to go through, mm-hmm. uh, and the election having a huge, huge impact on consumers. But last thing here, Ken, in the next minute or so, would you advise businesses to take this wait and see approach, or is it just like human nature to say, "Oh my goodness, it's a presidential election. We must kind of, you know, keep our powder dry for the next thirty-five days"? Or is that kind of a loser mentality when? Probably, and I mean, you know, I think there's two very different visions for the country, but at least in the short term, not a lot is going to change. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. I would say to businesses, I, I wouldn't be licking your finger and sticking it in the air of who wins in the White House mm-hmm. uh, because you've got to run your business. So if you feel like, hey, we've got some growth and momentum and we need to hire right now, I would hire. If you feel like your business is tight right now and you need to stack some cash and run really lean, then I would run really lean. Uh, You have to make your decision on essentially what's going on in your house, in all quotes, not what's happening in the White House. And and I've lived through several presidents where, uh, you know, I managed to do well in every presidency. So, you know, unless there is something that is um, just out of left field Mm -hmm. that is affected by a presidential policy, uh, then I'd still make the decisions based on what you think you need to do based on your balance sheet. 
He is Ken Coleman. You hear him on the Ramsey Show, his own show, The Ken Coleman Show. You can find it wherever you get your podcast. Ramsey personality, best-selling author as well, uh, has great books out there from Paycheck to Purpose, happens to be one of my favorites in case you're looking for that new path and that new job. Ken, thank you for the time, my friend. We so appreciate it. We'll be listening. Thanks, Pete, for having me. Good to talk. As always, great to have Ken Coleman on KCMO Talk Radio.